at what point in your childhood did you realize I have to now be the parent to my parents? Pretty early on, especially with my mother. Um, she just, I wasn't going to get parenting there. I was, she wasn't going to make food for us. She wasn't going to take care of us. She wasn't going to dress us. We just, real early on, I, I, I learned to take care of myself. And the, and the downside of that is you got to take care of yourself. And the blessing is you learn to take care of yourself. And that's not the worst thing in the world. But I have to back, go back a little bit and say, what you just said about it resonates with you. That is music to my ears because to me, that is why we tell our stories. You know, when I was set down to write, I said, why am I doing this? Why am I telling this embarrassing, humiliating story? It's because I think if we tell our stories honestly and openly, it helps other people come to terms with their story. And now you and I know that we have a lot in common and we could be buddies. And that's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah. I literally was watching the movie like, was this lady in my house? Yeah, that... <laughs> and like, just through like sobs of tears and okay. stuff like that. It was very therapeutic. I am, I have <clears throat> goose flesh. If you had your cameras on my legs, it's all 3D. Cause I got, that makes me so happy. Good. That, that is, that is what it's all about. It's, I mean, yeah, I love, you know, whatever recognition it gets or box office sales, yeah, I'll admit to you, I'd love for it to do well. But the real test of whether or not it does well is whether or not it touches the viewer's heart. So thank you. Was it therapeutic for you when you were writing it? Oh Did my gosh. Did you feel like all this stuff <laughs> bubbling up? It was the most therapeutic thing I've ever done in my life. It took. I wrote the first version in six weeks and I spent five years rewriting, trying to get it right. Because we all know things that we don't realize that we know or we don't want to admit to ourselves. And I read it back the first time, I was a little shocked. I was like, dang, you know, there's some pretty weird stuff happened to me. But I glossed over the unpleasant things. And part of the secret of storytelling is shining your light in the dark corners. And these things that we don't want to admit to ourselves that happen, they're, oh, they're kind of ugly, kind of complicated. You want to leave it out because you really don't want people to know that about you. That is what you must write about. And what I've come to believe is that that is the best thing you have going for you. These things we don't like about ourselves is where our greatest strengths lie. If you can put those things to advantage, uh, to, to work for you. And I'm a big fan now of storytelling because, you know, I try to cut myself off from my past. I am the woman from nowhere. <laughs> I have no past. And it was only after I was able to confront this past and reconnect with these things that I wanted to pretend didn't happen that I found the best part of me, for better or worse. I don't know how good it is, but it's sort of like, wow, wow, this thing, this past I was so ashamed of is now a movie that I'm proud of. How beautiful is that? It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I want to ask about Woody Harrelson playing your father. Yes. Um, there was a time <clears throat> in the movie where I thought that he was going to be truly the bad guy. Mm -hmm. However, I never felt that way that he was... Um, everything he did was done with love. And I always felt that throughout. Is that because you intentionally did not want to paint him as this bad character or is that maybe the way he per portrayed it? That was the brilliance of Woody Harrelson's performance because that was my father. Woody Harrelson did not play my father. He became my father. It was bizarre. It was, it was a little almost disturbing because one time when I was on the set, we all went out to dinner and he was still in character. Naomi Watts was still in character and they started fighting over dinner. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's, Rex and Rosemary are at it again. But he understood that for all the damage that my father had, for all of his demons and wickedness and, and darkness and ugliness, he still loved me. And in his own damaged way, he gave me a gift that he never had. The whole lesson of demon hunting that he, he went on and on about it, but the truth be told, the demons got the best of him. But there's that pivotal scene where the little kids pile up and pound on Irma's head because they knew what the father didn't understand. You cannot do these things to us. You cannot hurt us. We have a sense of self-esteem, and we know that even though you're the parents, you're not allowed to do certain things. And that was the moment of truth. That was the moment that the kids became the true demon hunters. That they had the tools that the father never had because the father was able to give them to him. So whatever he did wrong, whatever he didn't do, he gave the children an incredible gift. Um, that The whole scene in the bar where he put the child, that would be me, in danger. 
you know, I don't know what that was about, and I still don't. I don't know if he knows. If he was unconsciously trying to bring the uh, uh, his daughter down to his level, whether he wanted to be the hero to come rescue, I don't know, and I'm not sure he knew. But it it, it was a tough moment, and it was the moment. It was the worst moment in my life. It was also the best thing that could have happened to me because it gave me the kick in the behind that I needed to realize as much as I love my father, and I believe he loved me, he was a damaged man, and I needed to save myself and get away from it. Oh, I love everything you just said. I really do. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank you. much. <laughs> I appreciate it.